All right, so we ran this little command, .NET EF DB context scaffold from this database using this package, the, and then put the results, the output into the models folder. And then it went and built all these different models for us. So it's got in here um, each, and, and it's making a guess, right, on how you want it. So always good to go verify that it looks the way you want it to, but it's taken all those tables and brought them into our program. All right, so that uh, is great. Now I did get a bunch of messages here, so I wanna just address these. Um, the first one was Entity Framework Core Tools version 8.0.1 is older than that of eight, than the runtime, which is the, the system where I'm updated to of 8.0.2 in this case. And these updates are coming out frequently, right? And so I can solve this by saying .NET, um, <laughs> now I have to remember, I'm getting my commands confused. What I wanted to do was a .NET uh, um, EF database update. That's not right. We want to say .NET um, tool update global .NET EF. So .NET tool update global .NET EF. And when we run that, it will go in and update. Uh oh, what did I miss? Skipping NuGet package signature verification. Let's do a .NET EF. And that will tell us which version we're in. Did we get it? Oh, it said it did update. It just skipped verification. Okay. Um, it doesn't usually show that message. So uh, anyway, so we're, we're updated to 8.0.2. So now if we run that same command, it would, we obviously don't want to do it. It'll rebuild all this stuff. But um, that will uh, get rid of this error. And then these are just um, various error, various warnings about the data and how it doesn't match up. The column starting position on table all star full should map to a property of type decimal, but its values are in an incompatible format. Use a different type. So again, this has built the structure for us, but best thing then is to go open the database and go look at what it has in here. And, and look at the data for the all stars um, full and, and see what it's referring to and then make changes as necessary to the models. But this does a lot of the work for us. We don't just wanna assume it's correct. We do wanna verify, but that will do a lot of the work for us. All right, so where do we go from here? Well, we still need to, to get that other information in in terms of setting up the database. So if we wanna use this database in our app, we still want to set up the service. So we're going to go into, so we don't need to do anything with migrations or update or anything like that. But in our services, we still need to set up a DB context file. Now, one of the things that was scaffolded was this context file. So this has got what we had typically would have uh, created ourselves. It's got the name of the context file. We can obviously rename that if we want to, that inherits from the DB context. It has this constructor that sets up the base options just like we did. And then it's going and creating a bunch of DB sets that, uh, of individual uh, objects that refer to um, this set of objects that will relate to the database tables. And so the all-star fools table, the appearances table, the awards managers table, all of these things are going to relate uh, to those tables. But remember, this is like a row in the database and this is the table with all the rows. So this is an individual instance of an all-star full. We put a bunch of them together in a DB set and that's what makes up all-star fools the table. All right, so we've got the context file built. We don't need to do that. that this process did that for us. But in our program CS file, I still need to tell the program we're attaching using that DB context file as a liaison. So, we say here builder services just like we did before. And then we say um, we're going, we want to add a DB context. And the type of DB context file we want to add is this, this one that was created for us. So the layman, layman context. And then we add in here the options, lambda. 
And um, then we have an opening brace. And inside of that, we say options dot use SQLite. This is all similar to what we did before. And then in there, we need to put the connection string. So we can do one of two things. Either we can go in directly and say data source equals, and the name of the database, so layman underscore 1871 hyphen 2022 dot SQLite. Okay, we can put that directly in there, but then whenever we need the database, to, to, to refer to the database anywhere in this program, which we end up doing in different places at some point, then if we change the database or change the name of the database, then we need to go through everywhere and change it, it whatever place it is in the program. And you can try and do a find and replace and whatever, but it gets messy. A lot of the theme of this set of videos is doing things in a way that will save us trouble later on. And so instead of doing this this way, what we do instead, and what I showed you before, is we go to the appsettings.json, we add an additional entry. So we put a comma here, that's tripped up some people. And then an additional entry, we say connection strings, and we're gonna set up a, a, a connection string here. We'll call this one baseball connection, colon. And then it's gonna say, what do you wanna put in there? Well, I'm gonna put the name of the database, so layman underscore 1871 hyphen 2022 dot SQLite and then that entry for the connection string now sits here in this JSON file. So the back in the program CS, instead of referring to this directly, hard coding it, I say instead, instead let's go out to the, um, the builder dot configuration file and then in brackets I say Go out to the connection strings section and look for one called baseball connection. And so when I do that, it uses app settings as part of the configuration. And so it'll jump over to the app settings.json file, look in the connection strings, find an entry for baseball connection, and then put that, drop that, uh, whatever's in there in place of all this. And that's how we get that into the, the program. All right, so that's how we set up the services to connect. And now we are connected into that database. Now, I mentioned here this little Lambda, and I think this is a great time for us to just walk through the Lambda function. And so I'm just gonna do that in a, in a separate little video here. Spencer, out.